It's been said that our gaze determines our focus. In other words, what we're looking at is what we're going to be thinking about. And I'm going to give you two stories, one from the Old Testament, one from the New Testament, that exemplify this characteristic. And I'm going to encourage you to read them on your own with this in mind. That's all on this edition of the podcast. It's still called today a podcast of encouragement. How's everybody doing? It's Thursday evening here in Dallas, Fort Worth. And it's been a long time since I recorded a podcast because if I don't have anything to say, I don't have anything to say. But I've got something to say. <laughs> so in the group that I attend, the recovery group that I attend called Steps here, um, we had talked about several weeks ago, our gaze determining our focus. And I've been praying about that and meditating about that. And I'm going to give you a story. I'm going to give you the cliff note story of each one of these. And we're going to take one from the Old Testament. And we're going to take one from the New Testament. But first, we're going to start off with uh, in the Old Testament. And we are going to talk about Numbers chapter 13 and 14 and let me give you the rundown of the story it seems that israel was just not too far away from actually reaching the promised land that god had given them so moses picked one person from each tribe of israel to go into the land of canaan and search it out and bring him back a report well, they did so, and they were in this land for about 40 days. And Moses said, hey, here's what I want to know. I want to know if it's a land full of milk and honey. I want to know what the produce is like. I want to know what the people are like, and I want to know what the cities are like. Are they large? Are they fortified? He wanted a full scout report. Well, they spent 40 days there. And on their way back, they snipped off some fruit from a grapevine and brought some munchies back for them to check out. And when they ask him, well, what did you see? And he goes, the land, and one of the spies said, the land is indeed flowing with milk and honey. He said, the produce is plentiful. We even brought back some of, this, some of these fruits and check them out. Now bear in mind, I want you to go read this yourself. He said, I want you to check these out. And he said, well, that's fantastic. What about the cities? He goes, the cities are large and the inhabitants are many, but the inhabitants, we are grasshoppers in their sight. We are small in stature in their sight. And that night when the spies brought back their report, the whole camp of Israel was basically just kind of whining and complaining about the whole thing. And the Bible says that they pleaded with him. The leadership of Israel pleaded with him that they not give up, that they would remember the promises of God and not want to go back to Egypt because the whole camp was saying, well, we should just go back to Egypt and die there. They knew Egypt. They were comfortable with the, well, they were comfortable with the pain that they knew there. This particular story reminds me of my own recovery from alcohol. It reminds me of just a few months in, five or six or seven months in, I was Seeing my friends still going out and having fun, and I was struggling, trying not to think about drinking all the time. And I wanted to be back in Egypt. I wanted to be there with them. Because I was familiar with that pain. And the Israelites are familiar with that pain. Even though they were just a, just a few weeks away from their deliverance. And that story is in Numbers thir chapters 13 and 14, and it's worth a read, and you'll get a much better view of it than I'm giving you right now. But if 
if you are in the process of recovering from an addiction, if you're in the process of trying to stop looking at pornography, if you're in the process of trying to stay sober or getting used to a new situation or being in a new city, hang in there and don't go back to where you got, where, where you came from, because God is leading you into a place that he has promised you. And contrary to popular doctrine, God never said it was going to be easy. God never said everything was going to be fun in the Christian life. Nowhere did he say that. But he did promise that if we obey, we would see blessings. So obey and continue on. And don't even think about going back to where you came from. Don't even think about picking up that bottle. Don't even think about picking up that phone and calling that one person you used to hang out with. Don't think about picking up that phone and, and going to the websites you know you shouldn't be going to. Reach out to a friend. Hang tight. And trust in God. The other story I want to point you to and encourage you to read is going to be found in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 14, verses 22 through 32. And this is one we're all familiar with. The disciples were on a on the boat out in the middle of Lake Genesaret, and a storm came, as happened a lot. There would be a north wind come across that lake, and it would cause all sorts of havoc. And they were panicking in the boat, and they saw somebody walking toward them. And it turned out to be the Lord. And the story we all know, it turned out to be the Lord. And the Lord said, be at peace. And Peter said, Lord, if it's you, call me and I will come walk toward you. So Peter got out of the boat. I find it interesting that the Bible doesn't say just how far he got. But Peter started walking on those, walking on those waves, walking on the water. And the story records that he began to sink. And that the Lord reached out and saved him. Greater minds than I have pondered this story and thought about it, but I know what would have freaked me out, seeing all those waves and the wind blowing all that fierce water around. But how does that translate to us? Well, I can't speak for you, but I can speak for me. I know when I lost my job a few years back, the waves of homelessness reared up on my reared up in my face. The waves of insecurity began to dominate themselves over the promises that God made. The waves of loneliness began to catch my eye and I began to focus on those things and I began to sink. But fortunately, God saved me. But what is it for you? What are those waves that pull your eyes off Christ himself and cause you to sink and cause you to falter? Is it your bank account? Is it your job situation? Is it your loneliness? Well, that was a big one for me. Is it your insecurity? Our gaze determines our focus. And if we focus on the supposed easy life we had back in Egypt, we'll never make it to the promised land. And if we focus on the waves that are trying to assert themselves against Christ and his promises, well, we're going to sink too. It's not an easy task, friends. It happens to all of us. But fortunately, like Peter, if we begin to sink, Christ will lift us up. But we do well to keep our eyes fixed on Christ. To keep our eyes fixed on the promise of Canaan. And remember all the things that God has done for us. And keep our eyes fixed on Christ. And keep reminding ourselves of his faithfulness. 
And then pretty soon, those waves will die down. And we'll be walking with God through impossible circumstances. Because God is the master of all things. It's a short podcast, but I hope this gives you something to think about. And I hope this gives you some encouragement. Now I'm going to post a song of the week for those who are watching this on my YouTube channel. Uh, the YouTube channel is what the podcast is called. It's called It's Still Called Today. You can find it on, you can Google it on YouTube and find it there. Uh, this will be up on Apple. It'll be up on Spotify and all the other places. I'm going to try to be a little more consistent about getting a podcast out, but if I don't have anything relevant to say, I think it's best just to kind of not say anything at all. All I know is that all the things that I was afraid of when my wife passed away, all the things I was afraid of when I lost my job, all the things that I was concerned about never happened. I'm sober. I'm happy. I'm living a life that I never thought that I could live. I have plenty of time to study. And I enjoy what I'm doing right now. Friends, I pray that the, I pray that this story has encouraged you. And I pray that you go back and you read Numbers chapter 13 and 14. And I pray that you go back and read Matthew chapter 14, verses 22 and 23. Read them a few times. Heavenly Father, I pray everybody listening to the sound of my voice has drawn some sort of encouragement from this. And maybe this podcast, they found it at the right time. Maybe it's three o'clock in the morning and they're thinking about giving up. I pray that this encourages them, encourages them. And I ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for listening to the podcast. I appreciate it. I'm going to be back with another one relatively quick, probably within the next couple of weeks. I try to keep these podcasts short. Because I know people got things to do. But remember this, saints. Our gaze determines our focus. Keep your eyes on Jesus and not the waves. Mm -hmm.